All right, so let's get started. So there's a couple things that I would want to do immediately. So let's switch over to the model space. And uh, so a, a few things that I would want to do is I would want to copy this information so that I have a clean slate to draw to, to work with. Give me one second here while I do one quick thing here. And what I want to do is I, I just uh, I just need to make sure that for recording purposes you can see this really easily. So let me make this black. And I'm going to start off with something really simple. I'm just going to take this information and see if there's any 3D components in it already. So just by using the view cube, um, I can take a look at it from like an elevation or a section view. So I clicked on the, the front view there and I can see that everything is laid out flat linear so I can tell very easily if that's 2D or if that's 3D and I can you know I can view it from different angles of course but uh, what's most relevant for me right now is let's go take a look at the content itself so my challenge is let's recreate this setup this exact setup I'm going to start with something real simple I'm just gonna take this information I'm going to copy it to my clipboard And here's the copy to clipboard command. You can also hit control C. And I'm going to start a new file. <clears throat> now in doing so, what I've just done is I've started a new file uh, specifically using the, the right template. So, um, so I can simply go to all these different templates. Now I will show you the difference very quickly here. What you're seeing is we have the classic AutoCAD template. This one happens to be for 3D. We also have AEC templates, and what this means is any template that you see with the acronym AEC in the front, that's AutoCAD architecture. It contains styles like walls, doors, and window styles already built into the template, so you don't have to mess around with adding content. Now below, you're going to see a lot of difference AECB, and what that stands for is AutoCAD architecture plus AutoCAD MEP, which is what you're going to want to use. So if I were to just start working with AutoCAD MEP in your file, which probably came from an AutoCAD template, I would have to load a lot of different styles to begin my, my work, and I don't really want to do that. <clears throat> so I'm just going to start with the AECB model U.S. Imperial color table. It's my favorite one that I like to deal with. I like U.S. Imperials versus metrics. I don't like the, the style tables. I like the color tables. It's, I've been a longtime user of AutoCAD going back to release two. So I'm really familiar with uh, with color tables. I'm just going to use that one. And what I want to do is I want to insert that to the original coordinates of where it was just to keep things c consistent. So here I've got my bag filters. I've got um, the, 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 the four setup array here. So I want to start off with something super simple. I just want to create a flange. Uh, of the flanged connections here. So let me just zoom in really closely here and I want to create this particular flange uh, setup. And what I mean by that is is this portion of it right here. Not the butterfly valve but this portion of it right here. So that's what I'm going to start off with. Here's how I do that. I will take this information and I will kind of copy it and work with it just over to the side over here. What I'm looking for are lines of symmetry. So here, I like to use the X line command um, when, when I have the opportunity. But what I want to do is I want to find the midpoint of this. So I'll just start by deleting some of the graphics here and finding my midpoints. So let's go to my snap settings. And let's go to, let's go turn these on. So here's my object snaps. I want endpoint, I want midpoint, and I want intersections. Now up at the top, you can hit the F3 button on your keyboard to turn the snaps on. And then you have the object uh, snap tracking on and off as well. But down below, you're going to see that you can <laughs> have all these MEP connectors and curves. So here's some pipe curve, here's some pipe connector. I'll show you how they work in a minute. Let's turn on the object snaps. 
And again, I'm just finding the midpoint of this, the line of symmetry here. So I like to use the X line uh, command, and it's just a construction line. And what it does is it gives me the ability to just make a note of where that that's at, right? So a couple things I want to do is I just want to find and close all this information up. So here I'll start the process of extending my line work. Now, <clears throat> this what we what we have here is a scenario where we've got a cylindrical object and a pipe connecting into that. So that's why you have this little curvature. But I I don't really think that it matters much when you do the the line the line work um, for the method that I'm about to use, because at the end what I'm going to do is I'm going to make solids and I'm going to merge them together. So even if it's a little bit longer, uh, it's not going to make much of a difference. So here instead of having that little line curve there. Here's some best practices for you. I'm just going to extend this information, uh, this line work, uh, to where it's most relevant. And I'm going to close this up. Now here's a little tip that I learned a long time ago when dealing with 3D and creating objects. Really what you want, you don't necessarily want um, all of the line work in place. What you really want is a profile. And that's why you see me getting rid of all of this different line work that you're seeing that's associated to everything. So I'm just getting the profile of where this is. And let's trim all this up together. <clears throat> okay. So let's make one polyline out of this. So I'm going to type P edit. And I'm going to, it's not a polyline currently. I will turn it into one. And now I will join all of the polylines together. And here I'll just type all. And what this does is it selects anything that's touching that polyline and joins it. So anything that's not part of the polyline that's that's connecting end to end, um, it's not going to be joined. As, as you can see, this other stuff here is not joined. All right, so that's one little tip. I like to make sure that when I deal with polylines, that my spaces are in fact closed as you can see here is it a closed polyline yes if it's not you can hit the drop down and change it from no to yes and it'll fill in wherever that missing com component is however i was careful when i drew this so i'm pretty satisfied with that in order for me to, to view what uh, i'm doing in 3d i love doing the two viewports and uh, it just makes things very clear for me I'll flip one up into a 3D view, and there's controls here that you can see. I've got a 2D wireframe. My best practice is if you're going to view it in, in 3D, use conceptual instead of realistic or any of these others. Conceptual just takes the layer of the color and doesn't have a hindrance of performance on your graphics card. So here I'll make a conceptual view of this. And again, let's uh, let's change that to black so it pops on the screen a little better. And let's change the color to black. All right, so watch this. Up above in my tool, uh, in my repertoire of tool uh, palettes and ribbons up here, I don't have my solids, so what we can do is we can show the panels and we can show the tabs. The tabs that I'm looking for are the solids. So now I've got the solids tab. And you got different ways that you can do uh, modeling. You can do boxes, you can do shapes, or you can do um, some other features here like the revolve command and, uh, and different, uh, different capabilities of the of that nature so here what I'll do is I'll just type revolve in my where's my tool feature and what I like about this is it tells you which which ribbon and which panel you should be looking for so here it's in the solids under modeling uh, under solid creation drop down so let's go find that in the ribbon. You could just launch it from here as well. So under modeling, and then I believe it's one of these solid view, 
solid drawing, solid profile. Oh, that's interesting. It's not in here. Oh, here it is. It's under the extrude revolve. So what this does is I'm just going to be very careful as to what's happening in the command prompt. I'm going to issue the command and it's asking to select the objects to revolve. So I'll just select that polyline that I created. And it's asking now to specify the axis. So the axis is the center line of symmetry here. Now it's asking for the rotation angle, and that's obviously 360 degrees. So what we have found then is, oh look, there's a little bit of a, there's a little bit of a discrepancy here in the line work. That's very interesting. Let me let me recreate this because we need to find the exact line of symmetry. So let me erase this. And actually, I'll just undo. Let me erase this and find the line of symmetry here. So again, I'll just start with a line command. I'll bring it through, and I'll trim it up. So now I've got the cent the cent the midpoint of this line is the the line of symmetry. And I can see that they're off a little bit. So I'll stretch this, I'll stretch this polyline so that the intersection matches up with the midpoint of that line. So I'll go through that revolve command one more time. Revolve this line work. Specify the axis. I'm reading my command prompt up there. And what's the degrees that I want to do? I want to do 360. So there, that's that's a lot better. Obviously, that's a lot better. So here's what we're going to do next. We're gonna we have a little. Uh, it looks like a bypass or something here off to the side. So what I want to do is I want to create this as well. So I'm going to take the line work here that I see and I'm going to stretch it out. And I mentioned earlier we're going to merge these solids later. Let me show you the process of what I'm talking about. So let's stretch these lines with the grips. So now I have, I just drew the center line, the line of symmetry of this next revolution. So let's do another P edit command. Let's join this information together. I want to join it. And I want to type all instead of, I mean, you could literally select everything if you wanted to, but you can also pick all. So there we've got the polyline created, and now I'm going to revolve that as well. So revolve, select the objects. These are the objects, and this is the line of symmetry, and then 360 is where I want it. Now, if I take a look at that, from another angle. Let's go ahead and, and view that from another angle. I'm going to bring up my navigation wheel. I like to center up on certain objects. So I'll center up on this and then I'll orbit around that center point. As you can see there's there's our weld neck, there's our flange, and then there's that little stub off to the side. So I got a lot going on here, right? So at this point what I want to do is let's get rid of some of the miscellaneous line work that I'm not going to need right now. Some of it isn't even relevant to, to what I'm doing. Now, what I want to do is I want to merge these two together. And we have a couple of tools that allow us to do that under the solid editing panel. Uh, we want a union, actually. I, I call it merge, but what we want is a union. And what this does is it combines 3D solids or 2D regions. I specifically use this with 3D solids. So the way we work with this is just select the objects and merge them together. Now you'll notice that the geometry changed where I used to have it extend all the way out it's no longer extending. So that's what we're looking at and that's how we're gonna do this with the body of the, the remainder of what's happening here. So I got one component done. Uh, a couple of other methods of how we can deal with this. Um, here I see the main body of, of all of this. So what I want to do 
is I want to copy the majority of this. So let's copy. Let's copy this portion of it off to the side. Notice I like to work with copies instead of the actual 2D line work. I like to leave the 2D line work as reference. So again, this exercise is going to be very, very similar. We're going to find the line of symmetry, and then we're going to simply create the, uh, the, the revolution. Okay, so let's start that process. I just want to take the line work. I want to clean it up and get to what I need. And I'm not being very critical about cleaning everything up because really what I'm looking for is the line of symmetry. So I'm going to use my X line command again. That's my line of symmetry. And then I'm going to trim everything up uh, to match. Now I made a, a goof earlier with the flange uh, with, with that outlet. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm lined up on that center point. So if I click on this, I can see the grip and my, my X line is in fact lined up with that. So let's trim the, everything up to that, to that line of symmetry. And I'll just kind of come down here and trim this up as well. To here and then trim again. I'm just typing in TR for trim on my keyboard and it initiates the command. I'm sure you're familiar with that. I'm going to get rid of this miscellaneous line here because you'll see that that gets created uh, later through the process. So now that I have it all cleaned up and all I have is a profile, I'm going to get rid of the ends of the construction line that I've just drawn. So let's trim this up and clean it up even further, right? So here we go. Uh, let's take a look at this from the side view. Now I'm going to leave temporarily the, the other line work on the other side of this profile. Um, and I do that on purpose because it helps me find any kind of errors that I might be faced with later. So let's go ahead and zoom in on the 3D view and the 2D view. All right. so. Again, let's p-edit. I'm sure you're very familiar with this command with all your years of AutoCAD use. And I'm just joining everything. I used to have a list routine that would take care of this. Join all these lines. All right, so I, I'm pretty trusting most of the time that everything has been closed, but I just love to verify that it's been closed. So there it is, it's closed. Now, let's revolve this. And here's the axis. I'm defining this the line of symmetry, and I'm telling it how far uh, to rotate that. So there's our vessel, our bag filter circumference. And I can see that the line work that I kept um, is in fact working out for me. So I'll go ahead and delete the, the miscellaneous line work that has been left behind. Now here on the back, it looks like I have two more cylindrical protrusions on the back. So again, I'll just take one of, the, they look exactly the same size. So I'll just take one of these and uh, I'll stretch this to half, to the midpoint. Okay, now let's revolve this one. and specify the we'll specify the uh, the axis and give it the rotation of 360 and there we have it so what I'll do now is I'll just copy this and I'll grab it from the endpoint oh I, I guess I don't have the endpoint anymore
what happens when you make a revolution it by default it deletes the original line work that uh, that you use to get it into place so I'll just uh, you know what it's okay I'll, I'll just do another revolution down here I was gonna try to copy that into place but I had deleted the line work so again just stretch and I'm careful which which um, which axis I'm using notice I didn't do the P edit this time I'm, I'm trusting that these are closed uh, line work but um, the reason I use the, uh, the the closed polyline method is there's no doubt there's no doubt whatsoever when uh, when you do that all right so let's take a look at this from another angle now obviously it's taking me a lot longer to go through the process of describing how to do this as opposed to what it would actually take me to do this so <clears throat> with that being said I mean the explanation of how how to go through this is uh, is pretty elaborate right so here, here's a here's a nifty trick I'm going to show you how I would go about doing this so part of this I'm going to revolve and I'll show you what I want to revolve I want to revolve this portion of it because I can find a line of symmetry pretty easy the other portion portion of this I'm going to use um, a sweep a sweep and I'll show you how that works and how we integrate all this together. All right, so again, I'll just take and copy this information from this location and I'll place it, I'll place it um, just somewhere I can work with. Okay, so the first part of this, I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to do the revolve. So again, I'll just start my, my X line here and get the profile. Now I'm going to get rid of these two lines here. I know that represents the bolt threading, but it's not necessary for what we're about to do. So let's trim this up. And let's shorten these lines. I'm just going to take them back to this, the midpoint of the, the, the respective lines. And finally, let's just clean this up. By using the trim command, I can easily go through and, and trim that up. Now, P edit, this will eliminate any erroneous or missing pieces of line work all right and let's just double check to see if that closed or not and down here closed yes all right excellent so let's start the revolve command you can also type this out into the command prompt but um, but you, I, I like picking it off the, the rim. All right, so now we've got a portion of this um, taken care of. I'm, I'm going to pan around and see if I can find that uh, in this other view. And let's zoom to that location. So again, we're talking details here. Is this absolutely necessary? I'm not sure, but I'm going to try to capture as much of it as I can. All right, so let's extend these pieces of line work back to where they had been originally. And... Uh, <clears throat> Oh yeah, I forgot it erased the original line work. So I'll just uh, 
I'll just draw some lines here and extend everything. Extend that line, and we will extend this other line. And maybe I didn't get it. All right. So what I want to do is I want to create a line that's offset from this. Uh, I want to find the center line because that's going to be the path of where I, I uh, sweep everything. So we've got different commands to extrude. We've, we can loft things. We can revolve. I'm going to show you the sweep next. So first things first, this is a metal bar that's been bent into this shape and welded to... Uh, welded to uh, this castle nut that's going to go onto that bolt. So, how do we effectively then create that shape? And here's one simple way. I'm going to show you the profile. If I were to cut that that bar in half, it would be essentially it would be. <clears throat> well, it would be. If I were to cut it along this axis, it would look like a circle, right? So let's start with a circle command it would look like a circle of that diameter. Now, I'm going to move this out of the way for just a few minutes here. I'll just move it out of the way. I want to create an offset here. <clears throat> but first, I want to join this polyline, p-edit. I'm going to take this um, this polyline yes I want to turn it into one I want to join it and I'm going to be specific this time normally I hit all but I want to join these three polylines all right so for some reason it looks like it did not join those together maybe they're not touching end to end so what do we have here we've got we've got an arc and we've got polyline and another line okay so let's just make sure that our lines meet up at the end of this arc so I'm using the grip to just temporarily move it out of the place and then put it back onto the endpoint so let's try that again p edit Let's join it with these three total. All right. Okay, somehow it didn't touch up, but that's okay. So I'm going to use an offset command, and I'm going to go half the distance. So there's my sweep. Now, the other thing I want to do is I want to extend these two. Uh, I want to extend these two lines to each other. So I'll just go ahead and use the extend command. Huh. Maybe I need another line. There we go. And now I want to use the sweep command. Sweep command is pretty cool. It's pretty simple to use. It's asking me to select the objects to sweep. The object to sweep is this circle. Now it's asking me for the sweep path. The sweep path is that particular uh, that particular uh, center line. And as you can see, I've got that built up. And now I just have a little bit of cleanup work to do before I'm completely finished with this. So what I want to do is I want to take a new construction line from the center of this solid and then cut everything off. So I have a slice command here. Here's the slice command. And it's asking me to select the objects I want to slice. And that's this new extrusion, that I, the sweep that I made. It's asking me to specify the start point. And I'll pick the line work, and it's asking me to select the second point, and I'll just type in EA here, 
and it's asking me which side do I want to keep. So really, at this point, I just pick on this other side, and it cuts that up for me. So what we're left then, what we're left with then, is the basic shape of the nut, the bolt, and the the hanger. All right. So we've got a lot of the components already taken care of. I'm looking at the final piece of this, which I think is going to be, uh, well, I think it's going to be the the top, the top portion of this. I've got I've got these flanges. I've got um, excuse me. I've got the connection, the inlet and the outlet. I've got the body created. I just need to do the top now. So the top, the top, as far as I can tell, has got a little bit of complexity. So here's here's the top. So what I want to do is again, I don't want to work with the 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 line work itself. I want to take it, and I want to move it over to this area that I'm working in. So let's get rid of what I don't need. Let's get rid of some of the detail lines here that I don't need. And uh, I'll get rid of this as well. And this is the center line for, it looks like a, a mounting ring. I can't quite make it out. I haven't found a good view for that, but it looks like, um, oh, here it is. I can see the top here. Here's one view of the top, and then here's the other view of the top. All right. Now, one piece of advice when you do your models, I would highly encourage you not to over model things. Um, as as you add more detail, um, it just makes everything a little bit more intense for your memory and, and whatnot. So I'm going to indulge a few things here, but I'm not going to go crazy with everything. So here I'm just cleaning up some of the line work, as you can see, and again, uh, P edit, join the rest of this. All right, let's go take a look. That's one polyline. Excellent. Okay. So I'm going to draw a line from endpoint to endpoint. And that will give me my offset distance from the end to the mid. And this is what I want to offset. Okay, again, another sweep. This time it's going to be a circle of this diameter, as you can see. Let's do a sweep, pick my object, and then pick my path. There it is. Okay, I've got the handle that we're going to place on top of this. And I've I've already I already have created the uh, the remainder of the uh, uh, the connection uh, hoist lift lift points. All right. So one thing about this, it's it's still two separate components. So again, let's union both of these together, as you can see there, and um, let's get rid of the line work that's not no longer necessary. Okay, so we've got the handle, we've got the lift points. Now it's time to create the, the body of this. So I'm going to make an assumption, which I probably shouldn't, seeing as how it's not exactly uh, symmetrical here, but um, I'm going to make an assumption that the top is in two components. It's got this, um, this triangular triad shape to the flange that fits over the top, but I'm going to make the assumption that the, the remainder of it is cylindrical in nature. All right, so a couple things I would want to do in that case. Again, I would want to find a point of symmetry and that how it relates specifically to, um, to the, uh, the body, right? So I'm going to make an assumption that there's a center line here. Uh, let's do this. From this point, perpendicular to this line. All right, this gives me the center point of this this uh, this bag filter. 
And what I want to do, I want to know specifically what this distance is from this line to this face. I want to know what this distance is. That's going to be um, what I'm going to use as a my assumption for the top. All right. So I'm just going to create a rectangle, generic AutoCAD command, rectangle from this point to this point. And a rectangle, you know as well as I do, it's just polylines that are already strung together. All right, so let's revolve this. this let's revolve this. If this is the center line, that's your 360. So there's the base of the top. Let's move that over to the side. We're gonna we're gonna rotate and fit all of this in place later. But um, the next part of this is let's figure out let's figure out the top. Okay. So the top I'm gonna make it really simple. Um, to start off with, I'm just going to remove the line work. And I realize you've got these cutouts, but they're not very important when we're when we're dealing with a 3d solid accuracy so let's go ahead and remove the the extraneous line work that's causing too much detail let's extend the line work just so we get a closed loop here and let's close this off as well remove some unnecessary lines. Let's type p edit to get the polyline command um, work in here. So let's go ahead and pick that one. Yes. Let's join all. Okay. So let's check to see if it joined it all. And I, oh, look at that. It didn't, don't, it didn't join it all. So let's just double check to make sure that we're on the endpoints. Somehow this was not on the endpoints. Again, p edit. Join. All right, let's check it again. Okay, I can see we're having some trouble with the, the line work here. So let's just take these lines move them out of the way and connect them you may have a lisp routine that takes care of this for you I used to have one but I'm just showing you the manual methods All right, that should be closed now. Yeah, okay, good. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use another command called extrude. So extrude, you select your object, and then you give it a, def a distance, right? So at this point, you can tell it, I want to choose a path, and this is my path. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I forgot about this. The distance, it's you have to kind of know what it is already. So let's let's do a list for this particular line, which represents the thickness of this top flange. And I can see that the length is three quarters of an inch. Okay, so again, extrude, pick your object, and now it's asking for the specify the the height. And I'll just type three quarters. And as you can see. We've now got all these components modeled and ready to be assembled. All right. So let's put this together. All right. So what I'm going to do then is I want to make sure that I line everything up accordingly. So I'm going to move things from the center of objects to the center of objects. So let's move, and I'm going to turn on my my center snap. Have it be a running snap. So from the center of this object to the center of this object. 
I will also, I forgot to um, create unions on these guys, so let's create a union. And let's repeat the union on this. So now what we've got then is if I just take a look around it, I can see that I've got my bag filter with the two um, with the two bypasses on the back here, as well as the top, and that's all one object. All right, so now what we want to do is we let's line things up here. So I will use a construction line, an X line, and I'll take the line from the bottom all the way out to the side. I can see that the bottoms and the tops are lined up. I also want to take another construction line, so I'll, I'll draw from one point to the other to get my, my, my midpoint here. I'll draw another construction line and figure out where the center of this flange is. Okay, uh, uh, excuse me, of the inlet and the outlet. So I'll just copy this information. I'll copy that new construction line down to the same location on the outlet. And what I want to do is I want to move so that this center line then is perpendicular to that object. So at this point I just kind of want to push it back, get it a little bit closer to my to my bag filter. I want to copy this. And make it also perpendicular to the second construction line. So we got everything lined up as far as height is concerned. The next thing I need is I need to know how far it protrudes from the center. So again, I'll just draw another construction line from here, and then I'll draw yet a second construction line from here. So what I know then is that these two lines represent the distance of the face of the flange to the center line of that bag filter. So I'm going to copy these two lines and I will place them in this location. So what I want to do now is I want to move it, move these uh, the face of the flanges here so that they're perpendicular to that same distance. All right, so everything is now lined up. As far as I'm concerned, everything is now lined up exactly where it needs to be. And this is the most crucial part about this, right? Where is the inlet? Where is the outlet? That's the crucial part about this. What's not so crucial is all the little intricate detail of the top and how all that comes together. That's not as crucial, but um, you know, the inlet and the outlet of pipes, that's absolutely crucial. The details of the, the component itself, they don't need to be this intricate. I could have made a box and connect and made the two connections, but I wanted it a little bit more realistic. All right. Let's put the top on and let's reconfigure how the handle lays into that. So a couple things. If I wanted to know, for instance, the distance of all of this information. Here's what I want to do. I want to do I want to do some construction lines from the center of the circle and I want to make sure I grab both center points and then I also want to grab the uh, the edge so this will help orient me properly. So what I want to do now is I want to move these two lines from a certain point to another known point. So now we've got the location of where this handle is supposed to be located. So what I want to do now is I just want to take that and move it to that specific location. Now things aren't going to line up initially because you've got X, Y, and Z that you have to uh, that you have to account for. So what I want to do is now that it's moved to the right location, I want to rotate it. And there's a couple of rotate tools that allow us to do this. There's 3D rotate and then there's rotate 3D. <laughs> they sound redundant but they work a little bit differently. Let's start with 3D rotate. 
I'm going to type that into my command prompt. Select your objects. Now it's asking to select your base point. And I want the center to be the base point. The rotation angle, I want it to go 90 degrees. Oh, what happened there? 3D rotate. The base point. That's strange. All right, let's try rotate 3D. Okay, this is this is a little easier to understand. So it's asking me what axis do you want to go through? And you can pick an axis or you can pick uh, or you can create it. So here here's I'm going to rotate it around the x axis. And I'm going to start with 90 degrees to see if that rotates it in the right direction. Uh, picking the uh, the point on the x-axis and now giving it 90 degrees uh, rotates it to the right direction. So what I've got going now is if I look at this in the front view, you will notice that even though I got it most mostly where it needs to be, you will see that I'm three quarters of an inch off, right? So now what I can do is I can just move this and I can use relative coordinates at 0, 0, 0.75 so that moves it in the Z direction so now that fits flush so there's a few methods here of how to get things to move into the right place and uh, let's flip that back up to a 3D view so what I can do at this point is, um, is I can merge these, I can make a union of both of these items And let's make a union. All right, there we go. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I want to locate. I want to locate the uh, uh, the hangers, the hangers for um, the the lid here. So again, by using some of the same uh, points. I will come in here and draw a vertical and a horizontal and I will draw yet a second vertical and what I want to do now is I want to draw a triangle and I want to um, use the center points of these uh, objects for my triangle location so I'm going to start a polyline uh, I'm going to start a polygon excuse me, a polyline. And I'm just going to use the centers as my snap point. And I'll close it up. There we go. And let's make sure it's closed. It's not. Okay, so yes, let's close it. Somehow the center points are off a little bit. All right, so let's move this triangle using the reference points that we created earlier, the same reference points that are here, right? So there we've got our locations. The points of the triangle is where this object is supposed to be located. All right, so let's move, let's make some copies. This will be easier. Let's make some copies from the center and let's place them on the endpoints. Excellent, okay. And we've got a lot of line work going on here so I'm going to get rid of some of it all right so what we want to do now is we want to rotate this using the same method so rotate 3d this is the classic AutoCAD rotation command and the newer one is 3D Rotate. It works a little bit differently. I, I forgot how to use it, obviously. And uh, 
select this object x-axis here let's go 90 degrees x-axis let's go here let's go 90 degrees now when I look at the top let's let's do that in the in the 3d view when I look at the top I can see that these are arranged vertically so and here I've got them arranged horizontally so let's let's change that super simple you're already familiar with how to do this just use the classic rotate AutoCAD rotate command and just give it 90 degrees All right, so we've got the top created. We're going to we're going to make a union out of all of this, and there's our union. So what we'll do next is we will rotate the whole top and place it right up on top of that. However, when I was looking at the configuration here, I can see that this round end, this round end right here, faces the flange. Now, if I look at this, a couple things have to happen. I have to rotate this by 90 degrees. So now that round end also faces the flange. But now I have to line things up. Now, this little uh, center line mark lines up the center line of the handle with the center line of the, of the bag filter. At least I'm taking an educated guess. I'm guessing that's how it is. So I'll just draw a construction line. And I'll move this so that the center of the handle is perpendicular to that construction line. All right, so now I'll, I'll issue rotate 3D command again. And I'll go to the X axis. I'll choose a point and then I'll rotate it by 90 degrees. And obviously that's rotated upside down, so I'll do it again, x-axis, and make sure it's it's 180 degrees. There we go, now that's, now that's right. Now I will make sure that the point here is perpendicular to the top that we've already created. Um, so what I want to do here is I want to use a point filter. To get that to lock into place. I'm sure you're familiar with point filters as well. All right, so here what we've got now is I've got a full blown three dimensional model of of how this works. We've got um, maybe one too many connections here. I, I, I just use the same. Uh, inlet for the outlet as well, but um, obviously yours is a little bit different. It doesn't have that outlet on both of them. It only has it on the top. I think that's an air outlet to, for bleeding or something. I'm not exactly sure what that is, but at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and call this good and uh, and union everything. So now we've got one object built out of all those different subcomponents that we modeled. I went into a lot of detail. Uh, into in a lot of detail of how to construct this. The beautiful thing about what I've just done is this works. All I've done is used AutoCAD commands till now. So this will work in Fabrication CAD MEP and it will also work for AutoCAD MEP. Right, so we're, we were talking about two different packages, the fabrication and the design, right? So AutoCAD MEP is for design and the Fabrication CAD MEP obviously is for detailing and uh, getting fabrication work done. Now, let's test a few things. Let's test the fitment of all of this. I'm just going to move this to the mid midpoint of this line. How well did we capture this? I would say we did really, really well. Oh, with the exception of the outlet. <laughs> I forgot to move those up in space, it looks like. Ah, okay. How far do I have to back up to get that in the right spot? Yeah, 
Yeah, I have to go back pretty far. Yeah, let's go back a little further. All right, so let's move these up. Okay, let's move these three. And by using Cartesian coordinates, I can tell it, I don't want to move in the X, so that's zero. I don't want to move in the Y, so that's zero. But I do want to move 0.75 inches positive in the Z direction, which moves it up. If I look at this, that's now fitting on the top. As you can see, it's now up on the top. All right, good. Union. Capture all that. Let's rotate that 90 degrees. And let's do rotate 3D. Oh, and I did the same mistake as last time. There we go. There we go. Okay, now we got that lined up. move that up. Now by moving the point filter I can tell it that I want this point to have to share the same y value as the center of this line but to keep its current x and y. Now when I look at that in 3D you will notice that it is really far off in space right so let's go ahead and correct that that angle as well. All right, so now we can just move. The center. And I'm going to move in the positive Z direction. So I want to do a point Z filter. And I want it to share the same Z filter as this, but keep it in the current X and Y. Excellent. Oh, I guess I moved it the wrong direction. All right. And again, let's just move this. And I want it to share the point, the same point X as this. And there we have it. Okay. Pretty accurate. So I like to leave, instead of editing out some of the mistakes I made, I like to leave those in there because they're a good learning opportunity for how all of this can come together. There's just something that seems a little, a little off about this, but maybe it's just the way I did it. All right, let's, let's make a union out of all of this again. And uh, I'm assuming we've gotten it all dialed in. And again, this is why I don't like to work with the original line work because I like to test to see if I got the fitment of everything in the right spot. And as you can see, the fitment, let's go ahead and regen, the fitment is pretty much right on to how all of that's supposed to work. Let's make this a different color so that it stands out. Um, let's make this like a green color. And then I want to issue a draw order command and push it back. So what this does, uh, let's go to basic tools, draw order. I want to push it back. So what this does is it shows any differences, right? Mine versus yours, it shows any differences in green. So I can see the variations of the tessellation where, where the 3D solid has been created, but Really, the outline of everything that you've drawn is completely occupying the outline of my uh, of my solid.
with maybe one exception, like right here. So that's how we create the AutoCAD model that works in both Fabrication and CAD MEP. Now obviously this is not oriented in the, the correct direction. Um, so I'm looking at the XYZ, the real world XYZ. Z is upwards, X of course is your horizontal axis, Y is your vertical, uh, your vertical axis when you're looking at it in plan view. Z is your elevation. So obviously these bag filters don't lay on their sides. They actually, I need to rotate this. I need to rotate that in uh, in space there. So let's pick an axis. Let's go here. Let's pull this way and let's go negative ninety degrees. Oh, wrong way. Let's go one eighty. There we go. That's more like it. So we've created a file, and I'm going to show you the next step, which is leveraging this one file that we've created. Um, and repurposing it for both Fabrication Academy P as well as Auto Academy P. So that's that's the next step.